invited you. Did okay, you get I'll some notification, notification or something? Um, no, I haven't. Um, if I, can you add me as a friend on Facebook? That way, um, you could send me a link or something if you want. Or I suppose friend you on Facebook? Okay. But, or send a, send a link, link through Facebook. There's a messenger or something. Um, let's see. If I can manage to do that on my phone. So I go to YouTube, oh, well, watch my, my channel. And I press that. And I should... How do I get the link? Oh, that's weird. <laughs> Hearing myself in my phone while I'm talking. Uh, of course copy, it would be awkward. Copy the link. Okay. And then to Facebook. Facebook. Steve Evans. Uh... Message. There you go. Just be a bit of a delay. There we go. Yeah, awesome. Okay. Do you see it now? I so. Yeah. Okay, so I'm guessing what you did is this. You scoped in here. Yeah. And you scoped, scoped into his and head and you did this. And then you added your head on top there. Right? Um, I'm a bit of a delay, but I am watching. Sorry. Um, I, yeah, I didn't delete it. What I did is I put the box over and then subtracted the head okay, off. Okay, so what you need to do to add anything to any limb of a character is say say we just take a box we say this is this is your head it's what you use this as a head regardless of how it looks you stamp it right. in you grab it with r2 you point at the head hold l1 press x once you see the plate under his feet comes up that means you're in the puppet so if i leave it now and scope out and I walk around with this guy, this box is going to follow him around. But it's not attached to his head. It's just oh, attached sorry. to Let's... the actual... I'm going to try and do it as you got me pretty ganked. I, I ain't got um, a puppet out at the moment. I've literally just got my floating head. <laughs> so let me just throw a puppet down real quick. And... Um, I'll try and do what you just said. It's... Who's that in chat? Just scoped. I don't. Oh, oh, Adam. Hi, Adam. It's another guy joining the chat. Or oh, screen. okay. I'm fine. How about you? I caught it. Uh, can't hear you. Stupid me. Of course I can't hear him. He's not talking. He's writing. <laughs> <laughs> so are you seeing the screen now? So I'll do it again. Okay. So yeah. So this is your scope so head, you right? Mm-hmm. So you grab this with R2, you point it R2, at his head, yeah. hold his L1, head. press yeah. X once, that means you're scoped into the puppet, but not the head. So you're still holding both R, R2, L1, and you scope in once more. Now you're in the head. So if I leave Bro, this I think... here, yeah, just... Hold on, I, I adjusted I my controls the other day, so it's very fiddly. So, we'll leave it there. And then I scope out again. L1 circle, once, twice. Now I'm out of the puppet. If I scope in, or possess the puppet now, he has a new hat. Oh, it's I easy think that, that's all somewhere. you need to do. You don't it need should to do be anything easy, more. but it's me. Right. So, uh, so if you're changing his head, what you do now is... <laughs> I need to change um, my controls. Fuck, I'm driving me crazy. Camera... <laughs> uh, I... Where was it? Dream shaping, Grab camera, the head. speed. Hold L1. So, 
what you do now is scope in again and then you open the tweak menu for the the default head you go to this menu and you press that to hide his head so now you have um, that that block as his head instead okay, so I've got to be in scoped I've got to be scoped in first so do I, do I scope in on my head first or do I scope in on the public first Uh, hold on, I'll do it again. Sorry, mate. <laughs> I just want to be thorough. Okay, so I have nothing. Grab a box. Yeah. That's his new head. Yeah. So, I'm not scoped into anything now. So I grab this with right. R2. Yeah, Hold R2. L1. Hold L1. Point it at his head. Press X okay. twice. Once to get into the puppet, the second time to get into the head, and then you just let go of R2. And then as you scope out, that block is sitting on his head like a hat. Once I've pressed X twice after holding R2 and L1. No, you're I holding R2 to, to hold the block all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you're what I'm doing. You're never letting go of this until okay. you're scoped all the way in. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't let go yet. Yeah, well, so once you pressed X twice on his head, you just let go of R, and then you has L1 and circle the scope back out again. And now he has a new hat. And then you can go in and hide the default head if you want to. But if your head is right. bigger than the default one, it's just stay inside there. It doesn't matter because you will never see it anyway. So if you do it like that. Okay, I don't know what I, I don't know what I've done differently to you. I think I followed all the instructions, but <laughs> only only certain so parts of my head has worked. Um, what's happening is uh, oh, now the head's just floating there now. Are you using um, a block or are you using your sculpture? I'm using my sculpture that I yeah, made. Yeah, because there might be some 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 settings in your your sculpture that's not right so try to learn the technique with just a regular block and then deal with the uh, the actual sculpture you want to use later right so just take a block okay yeah i'll, I'll try again i'll just use a, a regular block yeah what you said again i, I think you have like you have probably gone in here and tweaked a lot and fiddle around turn that on or something so it's not behaving as it should right um so hold r2 on the block yeah aim at the head yeah hold l1 yeah press All x right. twice press x twice and then just place yeah. it on the head and then as and you then scope let go out it just follows i should i can let go of everything now though yeah, let go of R2 out. and L1, and then press L1, okay. circle twice to scope back out. And now as you possess him, possess him, the block should just sit on his head like a hat. Okay. And it's the same for any body part. If you want to add something to his arm or his belly or his back or pelvis or legs, it's just the same, same procedure. So many people sculpt their puppets and then... In, in pieces and then they just attach them to the default puppet to make a new one instead of just sculpting on top of this puppet i see have you got um, it working now think, yeah i think i've got it working now that's actually on okay oh, that's brilliant and then after that though once i've done that and i've got it on i can just i can use subtract to get rid of the old no head no or... subtract not subtract you just <laughs> it's right, I watched you I watched in, a YouTube video. Are you watching me now? Yeah I am now, so, yeah. So now I'm scoped into the head and I press L one and square to open the tweak menu for the head. And I go to this oh, okay. menu with the Newton cradle icon and you press that eye and you hide the head. Ah, uh, okay. And you can turn it to not visible or something. Yeah, so now it's not visible. Uh, okay. As you close to the tweak menu you can't see it anymore. The only way you can see it again is to go to the eye and turn on view everything. Okay. Oh, awesome. 
And you can do that for the neck as well if you don't want to see the neck. I'll bring in the yeah, exit. Well, while I'm here, I might that. as well tell you another few things about puppets as well. Okay. So you might know that when you scope into a, an arm or leg like this, I get two. Yeah. Why is that? that I, I just want to scope uh, sculpt on this side, not that side. So why are there two? Right. The reason is when they made this puppet, they used live, used live clones. So they made one arm and they live cloned to the other side. So whatever you do to this arm is mirrored to that side. But there's a way right. to turn that off. If you look closely uh, around the, uh, the imp, it should say kill live clone or stop live clone or something similar. And the way you do that is you hover it and you press, what the fuck was it? Was it? Uh, so if I put, put this here now, you see it's going to be on both sides. Right. I don't want yeah. that. I just want it on one side. Let's go in into the arm. Oops. Sorry. And I can soft blend that into his arm if I want to. But there should be a, a around the imp there should be a, information how to kill the clone. Uh, reposition. I might have turned that off. What was it? Was it? S Damn it! I made a video of this and I forgot it already. <laughs> uh, there was something simple. Was it just pressing triangle on it? And that deletes the puppet. So it can't be that. Hmm. Uh, I know there is a way to kill the clone. I'm absolutely certain. Just trying to remember how. I should uh, add that I'm not completely sober now, so I'm not thinking straight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, rotate, rotate, resize, stamp, add, subtract, exit tool should be something delete live clone or similar or maybe I need to use a tool for it hold on maybe I need to have that selected to, to use it yeah look at that if I select that sheep okay that's the live clone uh, okay okay so if you select that sheep and I hover over here it says stop live clone do you see that yeah so I press triangle there. So now if I scope in here, it doesn't mirror to the other side anymore. Okay. So now the live clone is gone. And I had no idea about that. I've been using <laughs> Dreams since early access and I learned about that like two months ago or so. Okay. So you can kill the live clone because it's really annoying sometimes and you really want it other times. So it's uh, one of those things, I guess. So um, anything else you have having problems with that I can show you? Um, I have. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I'm like, I've even with all the tutorials I've watched, YouTube videos I've watched. Mm hmm. I, I tend to forget things, but after obviously talking through it with you, um, I've been able to actually pick it up now. Do you know how to use but, um, this puppet mirror? Um, puppet mirror. Oh, the clone thing with the sheep. No, you just no, it's, it's just to if you want. Oh, pose, the mirror. Pose yeah. Your character you can do this. So you get both limbs at the same if time. If you scoped in, it's on the right hand side, isn't it, on the screen? You can turn it on and off. Yeah, um, yeah, basically. It's very useful when you're animating I think that, sometimes. If you want to do I a think that having, having the help and 
you've been able to talk me through it has helped rather than just watching the tutorial. If you want to do an animation cycle, it's really useful to use this to clone. Uh, say you were doing a walk cycle, you have, I don't know how much you know about animation, but you have something called a contact pose where you have one leg forward and one back. So you right. have like something like this. That would be a contact pose. And then you want the opposite from when you're taking one step. So you want the left leg forward and the right back. Then you can do this. So you take a keyframe and okay. turn that on. And you press... Uh, oh, what? Uh, like that. Right. And then you turn that off again. And you repeat it for the other end position so you get the other foot back. It's a bit fiddly but it works. Okay. I've done it many times. So do you know how to color that something new people have lots of trouble with? Ah. Yeah, I was about to ask about that. <laughs> um coloring and painting. Mm -hmm. Um I've tried painting my head and all I've done is just change it all into one colour and I don't know how to like... Yeah, but that's because parts. you're probably doing this. And you're selecting colour here and you do that. And if I do that... Yeah, I am. And now I'm scoping in here and I'm going to select spray paint. And I'm going to yeah. paint a, a blue face on here with a circle. So I'm going to do... Hold on, need... Uh, that. I'm gonna do one eye, another eye, and a mouth, and you don't see okay. anything. Well, watch this. Ta da! <laughs> this is tint, yeah. and tint overrides spray paint. So, you never want to color something with this unless you're right. absolutely sure you're not gonna paint anything else on top of it. So you turn that off and now you can paint to your heart's content with uh, with the spray paint here. You select that okay. and you select here. How, and take, how do you spray paint again, Spar? You take a color here yeah. and you just take a shape. Spray paint there. Any, one, any one you want. Uh, and you just paint. And if you go here you can select okay. how much you're going to blend it. So you can even see it, how much it blends on, on the surface. I'm just like going to give could... that a quick go myself, if you don't mind. Just see if I can... And here you can uh, change the opacity. Do you have moves? I moves have what, controllers. Sorry. I don't, annoyingly, no. <laughs> okay, because painting with moves is a lot simpler. Yeah, I bet it is. In fact, the whole game just seems a lot, a lot simpler when it comes to having uh, that. Kind it's of just that part. this this menu that I need to press L1 and Square to access all of these, I can access with the moves without even opening this menu, just by Almost. twisting and turning and doing different gestures. Okay. So I can show you that actually. Just get some moves controllers. I can show you. Some, sorry, I have a question. Do you know if you're painting? I don't know. Is that correct? Say again. Are you paint if your I'm, head? Say if, yeah, I'll have to be scoped in on my head, don't I? Is that correct? Yeah, you need to be like. If you're going to paint the head, you absolutely need to be in, in this menu with all the yellow yellow things that's the modeling or what's it called it's not modeling what is it called it's called uh, sculpt tools i guess sculpt mode oh so, yeah so you need to be in in this area where you can select the paint you can't paint from out here because you have no paint oh, okay. here so if you do this this is the same as, as the tweak menu. This is tint. So if I select the color here and I, I say tint, you see all my paint goes away. 
Okay. So tint is pretty much the same as scoping in. Oh, sorry, not scoping in. Oh, opening in. Opening this and using this. That's also tint. But this menu here. Tint and uh, finish. You can change the finish to its metal or or something without the paint uh, affecting the paint, but you can't use the tint. You see now it's right. metal. But okay. you can't uh, use different materials. If I want to sculpt on this, I scope in here and I want to add a cylinder for whatever reason. Uh, I need to go to stamp mode again. I want to add that there. I can't make this not metal. Like I want this to be like plastic or something because the this thing is for the whole sculpture. If I want to do that, I need to make this a unique sculpture. So okay. to do that, you press that button. And now I can do whatever uh, whatever material I want on this, I can make it, uh, what direction do I need to drag it? Roughness and waxy. So now I have, this is, you see, this is not metal. Yeah. And now it's, now it's, it's two protection. sculptures. So if I scope that into this guy, so they both follow the, the character. So that's his new head. Okay. And also, uh, I took that and I scoped it in on the head, because this is his, like a different sculpture. They have nothing in common. So right. if I select this guy, and I scope, hold him, scope in once, and I. Let's see. Head. I select the head and I select that and I press the that thing to right. group them. That's the exact same thing as that grabbing this. Grabbing this, holding L1 or in on moves it's not L1 because there's no L1. There's a left triangle and X on top of the head. And now I scope this cylinder into his head that's the same thing as as grouping them because if i select this now we should say two somewhere uh, maybe here you see there's a minus there now that means that there's some group so this is one head now so to get rid of it i need to scope in and grab them each But that's uh, so. Any any finish you do on a sculpture, it's gonna be on the whole sculpture. You can't do separate parts. Unfortunately, not yet. Anyway, I hope that will be a future thing, because that would be cool. Okay. Because you know this thermal thing. Uh, it's uh, it builds up if you have sculptures that are made up of many different parts you probably heard that it's very good to clone in dreams yeah so if, if i take fuck that do something else if i just take a cube i'm positioned weirdly the sofa I can't the imps won't work as I want them I'm not in the right position so if I take this and I clone this like a motherfucker as many times as I want look at the thermal it's pretty much nothing happens right you see it's still 4% thermal 
But okay. But if I do this, and I scope out, and I take a clone, and I scope it into that. Uh, we take cylinder. We scope that into this thing. Oh, I know why it's jumping around. I forgot that I turned on snapping. So, uh, okay, <laughs> that was not my intent. Whoops. That scope out. So take that. So now this should be one thing. I need to add something else to it. Uh, scope in. Oh fuck, I was in the character as well. <coughs> Damn it. Oh, my usual stupidity when I'm showing off stuff. Damn it. And those are also in there, of course. Get them out. Now then. Okay. So now if I clone this, whoops. I'm supposed to hold the thing. And then, so that's 5% thermal, but now if I go in here and do some changes to any one of them, like anything you do uh, as regard to changing a sculpture that makes it a unique sculpture, you're going to see a drastic increase in, in, uh, in thermal. Look at the thermo. I'm making all of these unique now. So these are not clones anymore. At least those I have affected. Yeah, because I see. They, doesn't, they don't look the same. You see, the more I change them, the more thermo goes up. So now I'm at 15%. So you need to clone as much as possible. So with clever sculpting, you can make like a whole... Uh, city out of three blocks so what right. people tend to do is a cube has six sides so they make a sculpture that's have six unique sides and then just tumble them around and use the same block over and over yeah so that's how you, you just you to try and make it look different thermal. Like, and you also need you angles. also need to use uh, sculpture detail tool to turn down the sculpture detail as much as possible without losing any fidelity really it still looks pretty much the same but it cost way less now it's probably around one percent if i delete the character yeah one percent let me get rid of that as well so now it's one percent. I can clone this like ten thousand times, and it uh, shouldn't affect it much. That and turn around. Um, zoom out a bit so I've got some more room. Take that and clone that. Let me take the uh, wrong button. Let me take that and we clone that. It should be like a couple of thousand now or so. But we're still at 1% thermal. Right, right. You see, it's 3,135 objects now. The reason the sound is gone weird is because I'm using the move controllers and that means the DS4 turns off and my headphones are plugged into the DS4. So now you're hearing me through this, the camera speaker or camera microphone. Okay. 
So I need to reactivate it so I can hear you properly. There we go. So you see, this is the same cube, just 3000 of them, and it's still 1% thermal. Yeah. But if you if you would do this with like unique sculptures, that thermal would just blow up. Okay, that's that's good to know. Is um... so, let's let's open any any other scene I have that had some some sculptures. Uh, take something. This bolt. So this one is three percent thermal. So if we scope in, we take copy of that, scope it out, do a few of these, scope in. Which one did I scope in? Do that. Do that. That. Now it's thirteen percent. So uh, that wasn't really good good example either. Fuck it. Should find something else. What else do I have that's not super secret? Maybe this guy? This is fifteen percent. This is the thing I rigged for a guy that was on Facebook. I have not okay. animated it or anything. I just rigged it out for him. That's pretty cool. I like a centipede or something. Yeah, it's a big mecha centipede thing. Pretty cool. Whoops. Like that. So what happens if you copy this thing? You know if he's animated it. Sorry? Uh, I said, uh, do you know if he's animated it? Did uh, it for a friend? And... I don't know. Be quite, uh, I'm sure if he did. To see, to see that moving around. I, uh, I'm not sure it's possible to animate it in current state either because I had really a hard time making this work. I just rigged it up with connectors so the things can move. But if I play time now it just falls through the ground. Okay. Yeah. Because it was really tricky to do. If I turn on uh, the x-ray. Uh, a lot of limbs there isn't it? <laughs> See there's a lot of joints here. Yeah. So each section has like three links on each leg, on each side. Yeah. So, and they can swing around like that, all of them. Let's go up into uh, next section. Should be able to turn him at every every one of these, as you can see. And they should also be able to bend upwards, both sideways and upwards. But I'm not sure if I rigged it correctly. I got a thumbs up from the rigger of media molecule though, so I, I'm guessing oh, it's nice. pretty okay. <laughs> That's pretty nice, guys.
Yeah, I just saw it on Facebook and thought, hey, I want to rig that. Uh, actually, I, sh I should be able to go back. If I go to versions, I should be able to go back to what it was when I started it. Yeah, I've had this game like ever since it came out, and I've, n I've always attempted to make something and never oh. actually made anything. Oh, here we are. This is what it looked like when I got it. So I basically chopped off everything and kept the head and one one body part and then I just cloned it. Oh, and nice. obviously connected all of it. So I did like one of these sections and then I cloned it and I did the connections between them. But it wasn't that straightforward as you might think. Because if we do... Uh, that I need to turn on not that that so I can see something because this is just fake there's no joints in this unless he's redone it since I saw it lost okay so you so, got to like so sort of make the limbs move yourself so I had to like chop this up to get a separation here so the upper part can rotate on this plate. Okay. So the way this is built you can't take it apart very easily because all the parts are like connected. So it was a really tough job. So I need to make a clone of this and scope in and just start deleting the all the upper parts I got the button left and the reverse the procedure for the button part and keep the top part but as you can see there's a lot of details yeah, yeah and this is. this is not the way you build something that's supposed to be animated and rigged but I'm guessing that that was never his idea <laughs> So now we have the button part, and then I put a connector here between the button and the top so I can swivel them around. And I had to do that a lot of times. <laughs> and the same thing goes with yeah. with all of this, these things on the head, these mandibles or whatever they're called. They, don't, they are not joined now, they're just uh, jointed now, they're just separate parts. There's no joints here. So it was, it took a while. Yeah, I was going to say that's uh, some dedication. I just wanted to challenge myself and see if I can do it. And apparently I could. Um, yeah. Um, um, I was going to show you some move tricks you don't have moves but I'm just gonna show you anyway yeah. so as I was saying this menu you can get to most of these without even opening this menu with the moves so you can basically take a let's see a sphere and then you can press you take your two moves and you knock them together and then you get something called the free form forming between them okay. and then while you're holding them you can press the circle on the right move and section it and you can press uh, the circle uh, uh, square on the right move and the circle on the left move to make a hole in it so you can basically create an animal ear without even opening any menu oh, wow. so like this and then you can uh, once you commit to it you can scale it up and down you can change the you can change the grip point by doing let's see what button was it it was that you can grab it I want to 
say I want to hold it from that point. Now I'm holding it here and then if it's the head I want to keep it on, I can soft blend it into this head with uh, what button was that? Uh, X. No, that was looseness. I don't think I'm in, in stamp mode. Why can't I soft blend it? Let me see. Maybe I'm not in... No, I'm in smear mode, that's why. Uh, don't want to be in smear mode. There we go. Not smear mode. We take that again. We do this. We press that twice to make it half. And then we make a hole. We commit to the shape. And we change the position. There, and then we can soft blend it into this cube if we want to. With oh, that, damn it, that scale. Why isn't soft blending working? What am I missing here? I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. Why is it soft blending working? Because I'm in smear again. Have I somehow changed the... There we go, soft blend. So why isn't it soft blending into the fucking surface then? Stupid thing. I'm pretty sure I forgot to say that it changed it. Oh, it's turned off again, damn it. Sorry. Make a new fucking base. Damn it. And I'm not in smear, okay? So why in this... I don't get it. I don't see any soft blend going on between these two surfaces. This is weird. It has never happened before. I'm pretty sure if I take anything now I can soft blend it into this thing. Yeah. You see, this is the soft blend with moves. You don't have to open any menus. I can even switch from from soft blend to hard blend by doing that. Yeah, that that seems so much easier. That does. So it's just a but a lot of button presses and gestures you need to remember. And then if I want to go negative, or sorry, uh, that was the long pronation. If I'm gonna go negative, I do this. Still without opening in any menu. All I do is hit the left move on the bottom of the right move to go between negative and positive. And if I do it the other way around, the right move on the left move button, I go to change color. Yeah, the moves are so nice to work with and the absolute best thing about moves is the tactile feel you got like everything is moving exactly as you think it would yeah it, it does look like it comes better i'm gonna lie what but what it's not good for is precise movement because that's much easier with ds4 when you're using the the if you want to move uh, things on the grid, uh, if you want to move far on the grid, it's very hard to 
stay like in the same you see how it flips around and whatnot if I use the DS4 I just grab this thing and I just go on forever and it never moves this is very hard to do with the, the moves yeah and it's also better to animate with with the ds4 because of of this we don't need to save that we go to some animation um what was it called back flip yeah doesn't matter just need a timeline to show you so when you have a timeline scope into or go into edit mode so the the imp becomes this red uh, diamond shape thing uh, is it that animation yeah so when you're using ds4 you hold l1 and you press the d-pad and you can flick back and forth and this is really important when you animate because if you don't okay. use this you need to hold L1 and X on each and every one of them like this to go between them back and forth and that's super annoying and that's what you have to do if you animate with moves because you don't have any deep okay. of moves so this is the equivalent of a 2D animator flicking his papers back and forth yeah a 3D animator going back and forth between the frames in Maya or whatever uh, program you're using. And this is crucial to animation. You need to look at the previous and the next frame when you animate. Always. So it leads into each other. So if I'm going to do this with moves. Sure I, may, I might have better control of, of, of actually moving the limbs. You might think anyway. But it's really unruly it's, it's too fast and nah it's not good in VR it's pretty cool though because when you animate in VR you can scale yourself down so it actually feels like standing beside uh, beside a mannequin in the store and positioning a, a mannequin because you're so tiny so you can place yourself under the arm and just grab this arm and just wave it around like it's a huge limb I mean it, it sounds really weird but in VR it makes perfect sense so you can scale yourself down so you're like standing in under his arm and just taking his arm but when you're not in VR you just look weird <laughs> so but then there's other other things that's much faster with the moves like scaling this up and down is really fast you this takes a lot of time on ds4 to do something like that and this as well to go If you look you see these bars here yeah this this is because they use the same timeline for animation as they do for music so this is like music bars but if you hold this with r2 and you press a uh, circle on the left move and you twist your left hand you scale it and you press uh, and just hover it without grabbing it just hover anywhere on this and you press the same button uh, circle on the left and you twist and now you see all the frames there's 30 frames in in one second in dreams instead of 24 as usually in film but this procedure to go from bars to to uh, actually seeing the frames is much more laborious with with the DS4 because then you have to do this. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> well, 
you hold L1 and you press what was it? Not that. You press. Oh, hold on. Now I've done it with the DS4 uh, the uh, moves. I can't remember what it was I'm doing. Uh, how was it? It was something about dragging the end. Oh, I'm still in that mode. I mean, edit mode. Sorry. That's why it's not behaving as it should. So this is scaling up and down. That just takes a lot of time. And then scaling the actual timeline. See how slow this is? Compared yeah. to the other. And then you usually end up with a really long timeline. You have to grab that edge over there and pull it back. And doing this with the moves is just lightning fast. I saw a media molecule do this on stream and I said, what the fuck did he do? <laughs> that was so fast. I couldn't believe it. Like, whoa. Everything so, just seems so much more... Um, so what we need is a way to flow. flick the frames with, with moves. And I think there's like... Uh, why can't we use like something like twisting? Like holding a button and twisting and go back and forth between the frames. It would be very nice. Because you would think that it animating with moves will be much more intuitive. Like it's easier to pose like with the moves. Another weird thing with moves or I should say with the DS4 versus moves is when you're animating IK versus FK, I don't know if you notice this or not, but if you're grabbing the hand with the R2. This is IK, inverse kinematics. I don't know if you know anything about animation, but it's called inverse kinematics. That means you grab the hand and the arm follows. Right. And if you grab it with L2 and use the sticks, you're animating an FK, forward kinematics. That means you're animating one limb and the next in the chain follows like you move the upper arm the lower arm and the wrist follows if you animate here the upper arm stays still yeah and you do that with l2 versus r2 so r2 is ik l2 is fk but to do it with moves i didn't know this for like i don't know how long way too long anyway so how do you switch ikfk with moves because you have no l or l2 on moves so what you do look really closely at the, the shapes of the imps yeah especially this one look what it looks like now and then i do this uh, okay oh, now now i'm in fk you see, they look pretty much the same, almost, except this one looks more like a diamond now. But it's very, very subtle. I see. So now it's in FK. That's the only thing you have showing in what mode you're animating with moves, and that's not good enough. It's simply not good enough. There should be some indicator like, now you're in FK, now you're in I IK. Yeah. Because this is just not good. So then I go back. I do the same same gesture I do when I go from positive to negative sculpt. I pu uh, punch the button to the top of the other. Uh, the left one to the bottom of the right one, I think. Or is it the other way around? I never learn. <laughs> uh not that. So right on the left. Yeah, left, top of the left to the bottom of the right. Do you hear the sound? There's a sound as well. I can hear it very faint. Yeah. Like a water droplet. Yeah, exactly. Sounds that. like. So that's the only thing. The sound and the shape of the left imp. But why not like an indicator on screen? IK, FK. Yeah. How easy would that be? It's just ridiculous. And also, the, there's a hashing on the puppet. You might have seen that as well. 
like when you animate uh, where's my timeline where did it go undo 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 the undo is so fantastic where did I do away my timeline I must have closed it or something there it is so we go <coughs> uh, no undo there we go so we go here to any frame and you look at the hashing on the hands I can tell that this is IK because of these lines these lines are only visible when you animate in IK and these are really important they give you both information about how smooth the arc is but also the timing if you look at the lines on it it's it's further spread apart here than it the it does up here so that means the animation is much faster over here than it is here right so that's a, an indication indication you need to pay attention to when you animate but about the hashing so the idea is that the hashing goes from the lower left to the upper right and that's IK okay so then we go to uh, another limb whoops unruly limb uh, unruly moves so let's go in here and we need to change to fk so now you see the hashing goes from the lower right to the upper left but besides the direction do you see something different with them I have a really hard time to see that because they say that in between the lines there's like right. uh, green and yellow or green and brown I don't see that I might be blind but yeah, I'm struggling to I mean it's just ridiculous <laughs> and, and then to, to actually see it you need to like place it like this you can see that it goes left to right because if you look like this it doesn't look like that I mean they should be able to just color them or something like when you're an IK that and it's uh, activated is green and if it's an FK it's red or something like that because this is just ridiculous yeah. it's super hard to tell I mean I don't see any colors in between the lines here no matter how close I get now I'm so close I'm like w looking through it I still don't see any color so uh, undo, 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 undo. and then <coughs> if we play this animation we should be able to see that it's also faster at the beginning well, I broke it a bit I think because the feet look weird now I don't know what is uh, I just wanted to try to do that move I don't know what the move is called I just want to try it and I didn't use reference which you should always use reference When you do any form of animation and then I have over here I have a why am I doing that here we have a backflip with reference Yeah, there's cameras on this one. Uh, should be able to do this maybe. Hmm. 
Hmm. I was under the impression I have more cameras. Okay. But anyway, I I made that first. I did one without. No, that's not the right button. First, I did a uh, one without reference, and that looks much much different. Uh, where did I put that there? Are you still here? Or am I talking to myself now? Okay. Can you say? Okay. <laughs> it's not easy. Uh, open that. Uh, get over there. So this is the same backflip animation before I watched reference. I just did it out of memory. I thought I could. Uh, I obviously couldn't, but I wanted to try. So this is yeah. without reference. And it's much different. It's not, not too bad. Good. It's not very good and it doesn't have any weight. I'm an animator, so I'm noticing these things much more than other people. You see how it just doesn't look right. But anyways, uh, now I've showed you that. I can show you a couple of other things you can do with moves that you can't do with DS4. Just for the hell of it. Just to get you get you to want them even more. Yeah, um, I do want them. <laughs> if you do get them though, try to get them used because they're much cheaper for one thing. And also don't forget to get a camera if you don't have a camera. Because some people, I've, uh, I've read yeah. about people buying moves and not having a camera. Then complaining that they don't, they don't work. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. You're going to need both. So obviously I can't use the PS4 camera I've got because the PS5, so it's not compatible. Uh, to use the PS4 camera on the PS5, you need an adapter, which you get for free from Sony. Oh, well, I don't just remember need to the adapter. It. I have the adapter, but oh, I don't have okay. a PS5. <laughs> 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 well, there's there's a website where you can order one for free. So look at this. This is uh, I can show you how it works with DS4 first. So you can do something like this. You scale this down so it becomes uh, I don't know what you can call it template. So then you can pull up to make like I don't know what we should call these houses like wood so that that's right. one thing you can do with any shape you can scale it down so it becomes like nothing and that's then that's so much easier just how quick you're doing it as well so then if you turn on the guide called stay upright you know it's always going to be upright well, if that didn't turn it that way, why is it doing that now? Maybe so it's not going to be tilted any any way. It's always going to be straight. So that's one thing you can do, but that that's not unique to either DS4 or moves. But you can do other shit with the moves that you can't do with the DS4. So you can do something like this. You take a shape and you knock them together. So instead of pulling them apart and getting a sh shape between them, I'm not sure why it's flickering and not showing the shape now. But if I don't pull them apart, you see there's a strange crosshair there? Yeah, I see. Uh, there, and I commit to that shape. So I keep this here. Now I, c now I can create shapes with just one move. I don't need the other one. I can just leave it on the side and just create shapes with this. So then I can pull it out and I can pull it up and size it with just one move. 
and meanwhile I can change the make a hole in it with this one or I can soft blend it or something like that with the other move or change the uh, looseness of it with the other move and this is still not committed it's impossible to do that with the DS4 so that's one thing you can do with moves that's unique another thing you can do with moves is really freaky and that involves the curve tool I'm not sure if you know anything about the curve tool but I'm gonna show you something cool anyway uh, okay. we're gonna make it yellow and we're gonna make it like metally because it looks much cooler <laughs> so when you're using the curve tool with moves oh wait a minute I should should show you the curve tool with ds4 first so they added uh, that you can use the grid with the the curve tool is it's super good because then you can stay focused on what you need to do with it so you place it down and you pull this off and it stays on the grid it didn't do that before okay. that, that came in the update but to, to use the curve tool with the ds4 you need to do this like pull these things and shape it and whatnot you do all this on That's the fly cool. with the moves and then you pull this thing you can scale taper it in one end or make it like a needle in the other end if I wasn't on the grid that is I guess I don't know why it's not working oh it's the grid is too big so you do that and then you can uh, change to whoops you can change to smear mode and you can smear with this if you want to but the thing is when you smear with this you can't change the shape you, you just smear with this if you do it with the moves you can change the shape the size the taper everything on the fly as you smear and that's really fucking crazy uh, I need to reset my amps I need to get that so now I've put these together oh hold on I need to reset the shape so we get this sausage between the moves so I press uh, X on the left move no not X circle and I tapered the each each end of them so I taper on that side and I taper on that side with the other move and while I'm doing this I can smear and I can scale and do all kinds of shit so I start oh. smearing and I change the shape as I go yeah, it looks much easier than this. I can create crazy shit with this. See how organic this is? Yeah. I mean, you can't Don't do this with, with the DS4. It's impossible. It's just, you can't do it. I mean, this is just a random... Oh, I forgot to turn off the grid. That's why it was a bit jittery. Let's get rid of it and get rid of the grid because the grid makes it like snapping to the grid while I'm doing it. It's much, much, much smoother without it. So we do it again. We taper that end. We taper that end. And then we can do something like. And you created modern art like in seconds. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then you can scope out and you can take this whole clump of shit and scale it and do whatever you want with it. Oh, it became vertebra. 
or whatever. <laughs> uh, what else can you do with moves? What have I forgotten? Um, yeah, you can do holes as I said, like if you do this thing first, you can do holes and you can make sections. I know what is flipping around. I still have... I turned that on as well. I forgot about that. Stay upright. That also makes shit just jump around the place. Now it's a bit more ruly. Yeah, there's a lot of things you can do. And there's also a uh, I think John, you know who John Beach is? He was, sorry. John Beach or Media Molecule, do you know who that <clears throat> is? Um, not really. <laughs> okay. So he showed something that if you use this trick with that, you can angle shit in a way that you can't do without moves. If you want to have connecting pieces that are exactly one direction or whatever it was something like this I can't remember but it was something along those lines I'm not as good as he is on, on using the moves because he's a pro and he should be because he's been using them for six years so yeah but it was something about angles and getting things to connect that it's much easier with with moves than it is with DS4 because of this tactile feel that everything you do is like one to one it's no delay there's no no uh, margin of error it's everything you do is exactly what you do with your hands and that just feels so good the first time I tried it I couldn't believe it because when I got when I got uh, dreams I didn't have moves and I just awed those to have them. And then I got them and I just, what the fuck? This is like another ball game. Yeah, it does, you do, it does look like, like you just make things look so much easier. Well, now I remember one thing you can do. But that's not entirely uh, only moves though. But I can show it with the moves because I have them now. So now I turn on what's called precise move and that means that I can move things on a, on one axis. You know in 3D there are are different axes. So you see uh, as I grab this you see that line. That means I'm moving it in X and now I'm moving it in Y and now I'm moving it in, in, okay. in uh, Z, but you see two axes now. So what yeah. you can do with with precise move is, once you see the axis light up, you hold down L1 on the DS4 or the left triangle on the left move, and you see the line turns white. Now it's locked just to the x-axis. No matter how you move your your other move, it's never going to go off that axis, and that's really okay. useful when you're building stuff. That's pretty and good. You can also move it on a plane. If you first go that way and then you go the other way, so you have two and then you hold down it, hold the thing down. Now you're moving in this plane, you never go up and down. That's also really useful. And I don't think many people know about this. I I tell everyone but hey will they listen? Not not sure. And another thing you can do is snapping like if I want to place this like flush on this surface I can yeah. do this so that's that becomes green hold that shift button so it becomes white do you see this line if I point this line yeah. on the surface I want to go to 
there and I let go now it's flush on the surface the reason they are like tilted is because I hadn't put this on a grid when I made it so if we delete all this shit and you turn on the grid I can show you uh, so on the grid uh, there so now it's on the grid we can turn off the grid we make a clone of this over here say that is a bit wonky so I can grab it and I can press align and it aligns to whatever closest 90 degree angle I am at when I press an align but if I want to make dead sure I'm on the same thing as that I turn on the grid and I place it and I press that to place it on the grid and if I turn it off and turn on precise move I should now be able to place this flush on the surface if I can let it's a bit fiddly it doesn't work always and I'm not sure why so it should be on the surface but it's not entirely always but it's close and it also helps if you have like uh, you should be able to place it on that too if I can remember how to do it you press shift like sh it's called shift when you press L1 or, or the left triangle so you look at the grid now now it's in in the default world grid but if I press uh, the shift and the the right triangle I change the grid yeah. to this this cubes original grid so now I can place this one on that side so just grab it and press align to grid and now this these two are on the same grid and this is also okay. something I don't see used very often people struggle a lot with the grid like there's the default grid and the it's the each individual objects grid so each object have a grid when you create them or gets a grid when you create them or whatever how you should pronounce that or say it get rid of that and you can do if you do circular things this is also something I struggle a long time with stamp it down and then scope out and you make sure it's on the grid so you have a you see there's a point in the middle if you want to place something yeah. concentric to that that point is crucial and now I messed it up look like why is it not snapping to the middle I can see the thing in the middle there that should be dead center and that's important when you're making car wheels or tires or hubs or whatever that you get okay. the, or the axle in the middle so the wheel doesn't bubble when it starts ro rotating so if I place a rotator on this now it should be stable uh, rotator where is it uh, there <laughs> yeah, it would be if it wasn't in the right direction. Uh, need to, to come on there. You see, no wobbling. It's dead center. Oh yeah. So. If you mess up when you're placing stuff, uh, 
you just randomly st stamp down stuff and you turn off the grid and you take another shape and you try to place it on on here oh that doesn't work okay I need to turn on the grid you think we turn on the grid turn on the grid damn it and you try to find that sweet spot then oh maybe I'm not lucky now <laughs> not sure <laughs> I'm not sure if it's in the middle I don't see a, 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 a dot in the middle anyway so I'm not I don't think it's in the middle scale it up I can probably see that it's not yeah that's not in the middle so now it's really hard to to get something in the middle here regardless of what level I put this at I struggle to find a dot in the middle so what John Beach uh, Media Molecules lead designer is saying is you need when you create something be sure to make it on the grid and not only that once you've stamped it down scope out and hold it and press align to grid before you start creating anything else so you're absolutely sure that it's on the grid okay and why is there no but no did I mess up again I'm not sure I think I did yeah you need to to fiddle around with it basically to get it to work see now it's dead center so now you can play stuff right in the middle there okay. it's very easy to mess up because I saw him do this on the stream and I thought what the fuck is he doing how did he do that so we did something like this and it just dun 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 to make like a binocular or something or a piston or whatever and it's like dead center all the way and I couldn't nice. believe how did he do that because I struggled like fucking hell with it I tried to make car car tires or bus tires I couldn't get him to line up um, what else yeah this is an important lesson that I learned by trial and error you know when you're using negative shapes and they stick out like this how do you grab the end here if I want to grab this end you see there's an end here how do I grab that yeah I can't really so what you have to okay. do is you push it in further in or I should have uh, precise moves it's in a straight line so now I can grab that end so you push it in then you take the stretch tool and now I can just push it as far out as I want So that's what you need to do if you need to grab the end that's sticking out. You either right. do that or you take the stretch tool on this and pull it out and then pull it back in again w once you've changed it. But sometimes you're making like really huge changes to something where you have a negative shape that goes like 10 meters or so and you can't even see it to the other side or you just see that I need to make that longer or shorter and you can't grab it so then you can like temporarily even shove it into some other thing close by just to be able to grab it 
And another thing I learned very recently is that if you you use negative shapes in, in smear mode like this, this is considered one shape. So I can clone this shape now. And it's like that. I had no idea that you can do that. I thought when you, you smeared, because you see when I hover over it, it's like jumping to all the different cylinders it, it's made up of. So I thought if I clone yeah. this, I'm just going to clone one cylinder. But in fact, I'm cloning the whole fucking thing. And I can scale it and I can make... Uh, hold on. Some seashell shaped thing out of it. Uh, um, with the VR release, there was also a new tool or gesture uh, for moves. Like you can hold something with R1 and you can press triangle on the left move and rotate. Maybe not in precise move. Hold on. Turn off. You see now I'm holding my right move still, but I can still rotate it with the left one. This was not possible before. Okay. This was added later and it always rotate from where you grab it. If I grab the corner over here, that's where it's going to rotate. This is also something that is harder to do with, uh, with DS4, but again, using the precise move uh, to rotate with with moves is much much harder than to do it with the DS4. You see how it twitches and behaves weird and then I use it with yeah. the DS4 and it's like super easy. Another thing I don't like is you see these angles? It tells you what angle you are at. But as soon as you let go, it's back to zero again. So the next time I rotate, it's going to start over. So it said 40 just now, and now it's zero again. If I start here, and I go here, I want it to say like 45 degrees the next time I grab it. I don't want to yeah. start at zero again, because it's really hard to keep track of how, how many degrees you moved each time. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah, so then the grabbing, just, the grabbing and rotating is the same with with the DS4. Like, if I grab the corner, it's the corner, but it's... So I would say, at least for me, I'm not... I haven't built that many scenes, but when you have, like... Dreamiverse stuff and you're building out the scene with Dreamiverse stuff or you're building it out of your own former creations that you grab and you have trees and whatnot it's much much faster to place them with moves because you just grab them and there's also something called real with the moves so you can do this send it into the distance this is not something you can do as easy with the DS4, I think. Is there even a reel on the DS4? I'm not sure. Flip. I really haven't been playing this that long, I can tell you. Oh, I don't think there's a reel. I don't see any reel anyway. It's that, but that moves the camera as well. So well, maybe if I do that, I pull out a bit first. No, it's not the same. You saw how fast it was with the moves. It's just grab it and whoa, away you go. And this is not scaling, this is reeling. Okay. Scaling is this. And the same same thing with the scaling. You see it's three hundred and twenty percent now. And I let go and I start and it starts on one hundred again. Why? I was just a three hundred. 
So same thing there. I, I want it to have like 100% when you start and then as you let go, next time I grab it, I want it to say 230, not 100. Yeah. So, yeah, the reeling is really nice. Let's say you, you're modeling some mountains or something. Oh, I want to see how it look over there. So you place them far, far away. And you make like, uh, I don't know. Uh, the mountain chain over there. And that's like miles away, let's say. Yes. Well, this probably is. Yeah, it's pretty far away. So that's something you can do with moves as well. Zoom between things. So say you say you wanna. Uh, Karim did this in the stream. Uh, let's see if I remember. Uh, not that. That. And smear. Okay. So he made something tiny over here. Whatever it is, let's pretend it's a tree or whatever. So this is a thing right. now. And I want to take this <coughs> way over there and place it on top of that. Then I can hold this thing and I can zoom all the way over there without changing the size of this. There's also something called imp reach. You see this number between the imps? Yeah. If I do that, I get another imp reach. So you place your, your imps besides the thing you want to work on. You press the two move buttons on top to change the imp reach. So you see how, how the imp is kind of the same size as that now. But if I do this, and then I, whoops, whoa, and I go here, and you see how, whoops, I can't even get there now. See how much bigger the imp is now than it used to be? Yeah, I can see. So that's why it's a bit unruly, because I'm trying to do small movement, and I'm set for doing massive movements, sort of. So you get your imp reach to be... So you can work on this. And then you grab it. I'm not entirely sure I remember this now, but I think you grab it and you hold down your shift key again and you press move on the right. Yeah. So now I stay that imp reach one, but I moved all the way over here. that makes sense I'm not sure so I'm just gonna see if I can put some of this up here so we can see it from way way back down there so there I take a copy of this and then I whoops now I'm gonna have a copy of that and then I'm setting the imp reach and I'm gonna move way down there again whoa okay <laughs> turn around all right yeah, it's so tiny, you can't even see it up there. It's there. <laughs> so, if you set the imp bridge, let's see. If you do this one big, and you place... I lost my train of thought. What, what am I trying to show now? Uh... Yeah, also grabbing things in the distance is different with moves. Like, there's no problem grabbing this even though it's so far away. You can always grab it, like, whoop. And the imp reach is also uh, determines how far you can reach, because it, it this one-to-one -one that I said, that if I have this thing here, and I make it smaller. I can't, like when I'm stretching my arm straight out, I can't reach any longer than this. 
is as far as out, out as I can put it without using Real. And Real was just right. introduced with the VR expansion. So if I change the Imbridge, uh, I should be able to place it further away. Uh, do you see that? I think I'm yeah. moving it further away now. I can go from the edge to the middle almost. But if I so. place the imp reach to one to one, I can't get even halfway there with my full arm movement back and forth. But you can always grab things that are way, way out there. As long as you can see them, you can just grab them, regardless of what imprint you're in. And now with the reel, you can just reel the thing back in. <coughs> and reel it out again. But this zoom thing is really nice to do with the moves. To move around the scene. And you grab things with you and you boom. So I want to work over here now, okay? So I can set the imp reach and I can uh, take a sphere, no, sphere, and I can maybe turn on the, I can carve out something here. And then I can turn around and I can just zoom back over there. And I can go here and see what I did over there. And you can do zooming with the DS4 as well, but it's not as good. Uh, what button combination was it? Not that. Uh, yeah, you saw that? It's not that good. Just eh. So you have to drag yourself to lo the last bit. You know, there's something called the grab cam. You hold R R one. That's yeah. grab cam. So when you zoom with the DS4, I get there, mm -hmm. and then I have to use the grab cam to get all the way. I don't have to do that with the moves. I just zoom. But the grab cam is really it's good to to drag yourself to stuff. So you can basically just point there and do that. Drag yourself over there. But if you use any type of logic, I mean literally any type of logic, you can have like a, a gate and hold on, Let's stamp it down as well. And then zoom over here, and I make this as big as I can see it. And now I go back down there. As long as I can see the piece of logic, I can always zoom over there. Then I don't need to drag myself over there. Whoop. See how different that is? <coughs> yeah, it's much better. So, if you're make, making big scenes, it's a good idea to play some logic bits and pieces here and there just to navigate and move around the scene. But they also introduced this uh, camera bookmarks. I haven't used them, but it's basically that you can set up camera bookmarks for different parts of the scene. So I can go over here and I can, not that, place a camera bookmark go over here uh, damn it I place a camera bookmark and I go over here and I place a camera bookmark and then I can basically just flip between them by pressing these buttons okay so that's pretty nice that's also a rather recent thing 
How do you get rid of yeah, them? Yeah, I'll have to... Uh, oh, you just press triangle to delete them. But if you have a big scene, it's really good to have logic pieces set out. So you can put one over there and put one over there for whatever reason. And then you just... Um, I'm assuming you've got loads of tutorials on, on your If I got loads account. of tutorials? Nah. Yeah. Not loads, no. but I have a few. Okay. The tutorial um, master is the guy that won the most helpful dreamer, Tap Giles. He has like hundreds right. of tutorials. Okay, well, uh, I'll, I'll subscribe to you anyway. Cause, um, so what I what I have to... is like puppet stuff, some animation yeah. stuff and some puppet stuff that I've learned. To be fair, it's a bit stuff I need to get to grips with anyway, so... Um, obviously, I'm new to Dream, so... Well, I'm not yeah, new to it. I've had the game since, uh, out, but I just don't have a chance to actually make anything. I've been using it since early, since, since early access. Okay. So that's well, um, soon two <laughs> years. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't been playing it all that long. I've just been Dream surfing more than anything. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I'm going to have to jump off now. Um, yeah. It's quite late, yeah. <laughs> it's and, the middle um... of the night for you and me. <laughs> it's even more yeah. middle of the night for me because you're in the UK and I'm in Sweden. Oh, so wow. it's four o'clock okay. in the morning here now. Oops. Wow. I did it again. <laughs> <laughs> but, anyway, um, I, I I'll check your YouTube you videos something. out anyway. Yeah, I have, yeah. Um, I'll have to go back quite a bit there that I can use. Because um, my brain's like a sieve, I'll probably look for getting it. Yeah, we can do more yeah, share play some other day. Yeah, sounds good so, to me. So just ask me if there's something you need to know. I answer if I can. I'm not very good at logic though, but I know a bit, a bit about the modeling tools and whatnot. Awesome. Okay. All right. Well, um, I'll I'll send you a message if uh, I happen to see you on. Uh, yeah. I'll ask you a couple of questions if I need it. Cool. But yeah, just for your help. I'm brilliant. Yeah, I just love to help. I don't know what it is. I just love to help. Uh, definitely. Nice one for that, mate. Okay. And uh, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow if you're on. Good night. Yeah, good night then. Good night. Uh, do, 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 do. Free party. Ah. Oh.